going to ask everyone, amen, to stand, amen, as a pastor, amen, come in, amen. Amen. We always all the reverence the man of God, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. How many blessed folks in the house? Amen. 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 Are you blessed and you know it, amen? Amen. The Bible says, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you got breath in your body, you got a reason to give God some thanks. Amen. Amen. Come on and bless God with your hands. Amen. 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 Everybody say bless. 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 bless, bless, bless say I'm. I'm bless, bless. Say you're. you're bless. We are. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Everybody say bless. 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 Say I'm blessed. Say you're blessed. We're blessed. Bless. 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 Say I'm blessed. Say you're Bless, we are blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're, We're blessed, blessed when we come and when we go. We, we cast down, down every stronghold, sickness and poverty. For the devil is defeated. We, we are blessed. Listen, late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Just you wait and see. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work. work in your favor. Do you believe that? Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. Head around. Head around. Head around. Head around, 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 How many of y'all believe that today? But just you wait and see. Head around, 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 head around. And around, 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 we are blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we cast down sickness and for the devil is. For the devil Come on, everybody, everybody. We are blessed. Amen. Amen. Say, I don't know what you come to do. Look, look at somebody and say, I don't know what you come to do. But I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you really come to get your praise on today, let God have your best praise. Amen. Come on, give him your best, yeah. your best praise. Amen. 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 Come on, choir.
Jesus is all right. I know the man he's all right. Jesus is all right. I know the man he's all right. Cause he's been He's been He's been
Say word. Shall I, shall I be afraid? That's why I praise him for his amazing grace. Everybody ought to sing worthy. Lord, you've been a friend to the friendless. He's worthy. How many know that Jesus is worthy? He is so worthy. Listen, listen. I'm talking to you. Listen. I had a rough year this year. Amen. I chose to do something that I said I would never do. And what? But God was still with me. He walked with me. He talked with me. I found out I couldn't handle things on my own. I ain't no better than nobody else. Amen. I put myself above everybody. But God brought me down again. Amen. And I learned if I'm going to trust God, I got to trust him all the way. And not halfway, amen. I can't let pride take over your life. Because pride will bring you down. All the way down to the ground, amen. 
But I thank God that he's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. And I learned this time, if I'm going to be humble, I need to stay humble. The chops trying to be so high-minded because God looks high and he looks low. And I'm so glad it don't matter where you're at in life. Jesus is always there. Amen. I've had people that threaten to kill me, put guns to my head, but God, he stepped right in, and he saved me again. Amen. I want to thank God for being so worthy in my life. Even when I give up, there were times in my life this year that I gave up. I didn't care whether I lived or whether I died, Jimmy. I would get so high, I don't see how I woke up the next morning. I'll wake up, I'll say I'll never drink again, and the next thing you know, I had the bottom of my hand again, Mr. Randolph. But these last few weeks, I've been sober, I ain't been drinking nothing, and I feel so good. They say the church is a hospital, Hey, you ought to be able to admit your faults in here. Because we all got problems. But I can't point the finger at you. And you can't point the finger at me. I'm just trying to make it in. On this journey, it get hard sometimes. Boy, I get mad. I'm human. I have faults. My faults ain't your faults. Your faults ain't mine. But y'all continue to pray for that. I'm one of them type guys. I don't give up. I might fall, but I guarantee you I'll come up again. But I ain't coming up on my own. I'm coming up in Jesus' name. So that's my testimony for this morning. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you this one too, y'all. I'm sorry that I exposed myself in front of y'all. Some of y'all saw me drunk as Cootie Brown, but I couldn't help it, man. I tried to fight it. I couldn't fight it on my own. I had to isolate myself. I had to get get hid in a closet somewhere. But I was so glad that God, he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. Amen. And if anybody in here that's suffering with an alcohol or drug addiction problem, I'm here to tell you, retreat can't do it. But God can. All you got to do is put your trust in him. I've been down this road so many times, and God has delivered me so many times. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. I'm not ashamed. I'm in the right place. I'm at Peace Missionary Baptist Church Hospital this morning, and I'm telling the doctor what I need. How many of you know he's worthy? Say, worthy is he, he is so worthy. I say, worthy is thy name. Amen. Amen, amen. Worthy is he. Amen. Amen, Brother Lack. Uh, understand that um, there's nobody here, amen, that does not have faults. Amen. Nobody here that is perfect. Amen. Uh, there's only one perfect, and that is the Father. Amen. So we encourage you, we lift you up, and we'll continue to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen for for your testimony. Amen. Amen. You don't never know uh, what someone is going through or what they've been through. Amen. So therefore, we have to continue to keep us all lifted up. Amen. 
Amen. Brother James says, when you fall, count it all joy. Amen. 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 He said, when you fall. He didn't say if you fall. He said, when you fall. <laughs> Amen. It, it, implying that it's going to happen sooner or later. Amen. All of us are either going out of a storm or coming in one. Amen. Amen. But thank God for God's grace and mercy. Amen. He is worthy. Amen. Amen. If we have any visitors, amen, we want to tell you, uh, you're welcome. Amen. You're welcome to sing, shout, and dance, and do whatever it is that the Lord has placed on your heart. Amen. Any other birthdays? Any birthdays or anniversary this week? Any birthday? Brother Ty. Amen. Man, Sunday. Amen. Happy birthday. Brother Ty, amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Uh, one quick announcement. Round Island Creek Missionary Baptist Association on April the 2nd uh, will be having a college and career fair. Amen. Uh, so this event is for middle and high schoolers, and we want them to start thinking about their career path. They will have colleges, universities, and military recruitment recruiters and business to help them look at their future. Uh, anyone interested in this? As a matter of fact, they're asking that we bring five students. Amen. Asking that we bring five students. And they would like to have a final number on March the 27th. Then you can contact Beverly Malone for this. Amen. Uh, anything else? Uh, church conference. Wednesday night, 6.30, church conference. Amen. It's been the first one we had in a while. We try to do good. Amen. 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 Anything else? I would just like to tell everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, Sister Shirley Butler and Mark, for the love that was shown to me last week. And I just so appreciate it. Um, too many people said they were fine. Thank you. Amen. Amen. She was bouncing around all day. Amen. Thursday. Amen. Bouncing. Mother Randolph, Miss Annie, she was just prancing around all day. She was sure was happy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we thank you. Amen. For that. Amen. Most certainly do. Quiet. Give me one more song. And I'm ready to preach. Amen. I said this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I said this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. 
Give God a hand clap of praise for this choir. Amen. I'm giving honor to God who is the head of my life. To the 
associate ministers of peace to the deacons and the mothers, to the ushers, to each and every one of you that makes up this congregation. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. Let me say that one more time. I said it's good. It's good. Some of y'all missed it. Let me say it one more time. I said it's good. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord. One more time. That is a word. Found in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse number 1. Verses 1 through 6. And it reads. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein time pass ye walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. In the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins have quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you just wanting to tell you thank you. Heavenly Father, realizing that you are a God that sits high and a God that looks low. Heavenly Father, it's come down to the time of preaching. And I, like John, I realize that I must decrease while you increase. Heavenly Father, I pray for your anointing, realizing your anointing is not for me, but it's for this, your people. Heavenly Father, if you don't do it, it won't be done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Look at someone in close proximity and say, neighbor, the preacher is preaching about Dead in sin, made alive by grace. Dead in sin, but made alive by grace. These verses are a classic example of how the Apostle Paul wrote on the doctrine of salvation. Deacon Milan, they establish a bedrock of truth 
upon its rest everything we can know about how we are saved and why we are saved. While these verses don't present everything we can know on this matter, they do establish a foundation of truth that every Christian must understand if they wish to grasp the full meaning of the word grace. It was grace that woke you up this morning. Grace, God's unmerited favor. Grace is a gift from God. Grace is God's kindness that we don't deserve. The only reason why you're here today is because of God's grace. Grace started you on your way. Grace watched over you last night. Grace provided you with a roof over your head. Grace is what allows you to come home and flip on the light switch. And electricity flows from the light switch to the light bulbs. And because of grace, you have electricity and water running, hot water running in your house. Grace allows you to be able to walk into the kitchen, open up the refrigerator, pull out eggs, bacon, sausage, and biscuits. This is grace. As a matter of fact, the only reason why you woke up on Sunday morning was because of God's grace. The reason why you made it out that situation that you thought you weren't going to is because of God's grace. God's grace was upon you when you didn't even know it. You thought you were doing it all by yourself, but actually it was God's grace that brought you this far. And if we going to go any farther, it's going to be by God's grace. But there was a time when we ourselves were dead in sin. The first thing this text teaches us is that we were entangled in a state of spiritual death. We were entangled in a state of spiritual death. Back in those days when they wanted to catch fish, they did not have poles and rods and reels. They used nets. And what they would do was throw a net out in the sea. And, and the fish would get entangled in the net. And then they were pulled in the net, and this is how they caught fish. Understand, sin was like that very thing. Satan threw out his net, and when we began to get, we start swimming in the sea, we began to get entangled in this net of sin. And one point of another, we all have experienced spiritual death. In verse number one, this word dead in the Greek is necros, and it means a corpse. All of us were walking corpses, yet we were living financially, yet we were living sociologically, yet we were living mentally. Understand there is a such thing as being spiritually dead. There's vegetable life. There's animal life. There's mental life. But understand, you can be living one way and dead another. To be spiritually dead does not mean that we're physically dead. Does not even mean you're socially dead. But you are dead. 
Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 4 says, Sin blinded us. Romans 6 and 17 says, We were a slave to sin. John chapter 3, verses 19 through 20 says, We were lovers of darkness. Mark, the Gospel of Mark describes it in Mark chapter 2, verse 17 as being sick. And in Luke chapter 15, he describes it as being lost. Spiritually, when you are dead, you are separated from God. Verse 1 says you're dead. But then it says dead in trespasses and sin. The idea behind the word trespass, Brother Lack, is that we have crossed the line that God did not want us to. Don't you point your fingers at one another? Because all of us have done some things that we shouldn't have done. All of us have crossed some lines that we shouldn't have crossed. All of us have said some things that we should not have said. Understand something. God told Adam, don't eat off this tree. Sometimes, understand, we cross lines that we should not have crossed. The word trespasses mean we crossed over some boundaries. But then he says you did not just trespass, but then you sin. Meaning that you have missed the mark, the perfect standards of God. Understand Pastor John Stott says it like this. He says, before God, we are both rebels and failures. Not only does this text te teaches us that we're entangled, but then the text reminds them. Paul says to them, he said, not only were you entangled, but then he reminds them that you were once enemies of God engaging in evil acts. It's right there in verse number two and three. It says, among whom also, verse 3 says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, for all have sinned. It didn't say y'all, but it says all have sinned and fell short of the glory of of God. All of us have, have walked a path that we should not have walked. All of us ain't nothing but a bunch of exes. We're ex fornicators. We're ex thieves. We're ex child molesters. We're ex backbiters. Ex adulterers. Ex homosexual. Ex liars. Ex drug dealers. Ex drug addicts. Ex pimps. Ex prostitutes. Ex strippers. Ex alcoholics. Ex criminals. None of us are worthy because we all sin. We too have walked in sin. And our conversation was about sin. But God. Oh, y'all miss y'all shout. Verse number four says, but God. Not only do I see where we were entangled, not only does he remind them that they're enemies of God engaging in evil acts, but lastly, he says, but God. Thirdly, I see the enactment of God's grace and mercy. Verse 4 says, he loved me. Y'all miss y'all shout. Verse number four says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love. Understand something. The reason why you're here today is because God loved you. Anybody here glad that God loved you? John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. He, he didn't just love the good folks, but he also loved the bad folks. Uh, uh, he, he didn't just love uh, 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 those that had money, but he loved everybody. 
Anderson, when he says, for God so loved the world, that's, that's everybody. That's the white, that's the black, that's, that's the Chinese, that's the cripple, that's everybody. For God so loved the world. You ought to be shouting today just to know God loved you. Paul says, God love who is rich in mercy. Understand, he says, he loved me while I was dead in my sins. He loved me while I was doing wrong. He loved me when I was giving up right for the wrong. This is a requirement. Understand something for being saved. You must first be dead. Dead to every attempt to justify yourself before God. You got to understand that you didn't have anything to do with it. But the only reason why you're saved today is simply because of God's grace and his mercy. John chapter 5 verse 24 says, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has passed from death unto life. What God did was he, he shared in our death so that we could share in his resurrection. Can I, can I put it to you? Let, let me tell you to you like this. When we read verse number five, it says, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. Watch this. Let me read it one more time. It says, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. I got happy when I found this out in my study. But when we read this, in the Greek. In the King James, it says with Christ once. But when you read it in the Greek, this is just the first of three wills. The NIV translated it. Understand, he quickened us together with Christ, King James. But when we read it in the NIV, it said he raised us with Christ. And third, he seated us with him. In other words, let me put it in your lap. This is the reason why I got happy. When Christ died, he didn't die alone. He had us on his mind. When, when he died, we died. When, when God raised him out the grave, he didn't just raise Christ by himself, but he also raised us with him. And one day, just like he ascended Christ to heaven, one day he's going to come back and we're going to go to heaven with him. Let me put it in your lap. I, I got happy, Brother, Brother King. I knew them old folks. They, they may not have been able to read or write. But one thing is they knew who God was. And the old church used to put it this way. I done died one time. But I ain't got to die. No more. As I get ready, yeah, I'm gone to make my way to my clothes. Yeah, the old church. Mama, grandmama, and granddaddy didn't have a proper education like we have today. But one thing, they shown this did. But they understood grace and mercy. And we all, at one time or another, have been dead in our sins. But I thank God today that he did not let me Stay that way. And I thank God today 
that we serve a forgiving God. Mother Miley, he forgave me of my sins. When I was doing wrong, yes, out in a world of sin, I know that the Lord uh, forgave me for my disobedience. He forgave me, Brother Eric, for saying things that I know that I shouldn't have said. He forgave me, yes, of all of my wrongdoings. I know I'm not the only one that can testify and say there was times when I know I was doing wrong. But I thank God that he forgave me. He forgave me when I was a backbiter. He forgave me when I was a fornicator. He forgave me when I was a drunk. He forgave me when I was a drug dealer. He forgave me when I was a drug addict. He forgave me when I was not doing uh, his will. But I'm so glad that I can testify and say, I know that the Lord will reach way down and pick you up. He'll turn things around uh, in your life. And now I can say I once was blind, but now, yes, I can see. The songwriter says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Thou say the wretch, a wretch like me, anybody here glad for God's grace? Anybody here glad for his mercy? And I'm so glad today that I can know for sure that his grace uh, will not run out. God has enough grace for me and God has enough grace for you. God had enough grace 20 years ago. And God has enough grace from now on. Anybody here know what grace is to you? Grace is a mother for the motherless. Grace is a father for the fatherless. Anybody here? can testify when I look back over my life if it had not been for grace and his mercy I could have been dead sleeping in a cold cold grave it could have been me outdoors with no food to eat it could have been me sleeping under a bridge it could have been me who was another statistic but I think God that he did not have that for me and every day I'm trusting in his word because I got his grace on one side and I got mercy on another if there's anybody here who can say for sure grace brought me this far grace turned things around grace put food on my table grace allow me to step out on two good legs somebody here do you not know there's people here today got legs, but their legs won't work. 
some people here got eyes, but their eyes can't see. Some folks got arms, but they can't wave their arms. If there's any money here that can testify, it's a blessing to be able to wave your hands. It's a blessing to be able to stand on your feet. It's a blessing to be able to see with your eyes. Come out of here. Come right here. Come here a little bit closer. Can I tell you one thing? While it was storming, while it was raining, while the wind was blowing, you thought you was keeping yourself, but somebody here can testify if it had not, 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 not been for the Lord. He kept me when I couldn't keep myself. And he keeps on, he keeps on, he keeps on making a way. Every time I turn around, I got blessings over here, blessings over there. He keeps on opening doors for me. Man might close one door, but God will open another door. Somebody here, you've been crying all night long. You've been worried all night long. Listen here, child. Go down on your knees and look up toward heaven and say, Lord, have mercy on me. How many here know you ain't got to have a special prayer. You ain't got to have poetic rhythm or anything. All you got to do is say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And I come to tell you, he'll hear your prayers. If there's anybody here, no God will answer your prayers. Shout ya! Oh, yes! And I tell my story. I hadn't told my story in a while. But they whipped him. And they whipped him from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. Couldn't find no fault in him. I can hear Pilate saying, bring me some water. Let me wash my hands. But they kept on. And they kept on. He marched all the way up to God got the hill. He died. How many here know he died? How many here know he died? Can I tell my story? When he was down in the grave, I can hear grave and death having a conversation. I can hear grave saying, saying to death, death, can you hold him? I can hear grave saying, I got Adam, and he's still in the grave. I can hear grave saying, I got Moses, and he's still in the grave. I can hear grave saying, I got Ezekiel, and he's still in the grave. But early, 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 Sunday morning, Jesus took off that clothes, stepped out, said, I got all power, all power, all power, all power is in my hand. What kind of power is there today, Bailey? We got horsepower, but he had all power. Do you know it? There's nuclear power, but he had all power. Do you not know him? That's atomic power, but he had all power. What kind of power? All oh, power is in my hands. And can I tell you the good news? When he got up, we got up. 
And one of these days, when it's all over, we're going to fly away. We're going to fly away. Goodbye now. Finally, fare you well. If you don't hear me no more, remember Bailey said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 joy. It's going to come in the morning. I feel like preaching, y'all. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Say, find you somebody and say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't give up on God. He may not come when you want him to, but he's always, always, always on time. Find you somebody else. Hug them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Hug them and shake them. Shake them and rock it. And say, neighbor, the reason why I'm hugging you today because I want you to know everything is going to be all right. Keep on praising him. Keep on holding on to the Lord's hands. And one day, when it's all over, when it's all over, when it's all over, God bless you. Somebody know he good. Somebody know he good. Ain't he good? The doors of the church are open. Everyone stand. be one here who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Understand something. Without Christ, you are dead. Cut off from God. Separated. But when you make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, you are made alive by his grace and his mercy. Where are you? When you come, while the blood is running warm in your veins, will you come? Will you come? While the blood is running warm in your veins, maybe you just need a church home. And you want to make peace to a church home. Will you come? Come on, come on. May God bless you. Let us prepare our hearts to give.
first off, when we take up his, I will.